Quit with the incest already! What's up Shadowhunters, Angels and Downloaders alike and welcome to First Thoughts for episode 17 of Shadowhunter Season 2B, A Dark Reflection. Oh. Oh. <laughs> First of all, this is a good episode. There wasn't anything extremely problematic or annoying with this episode in terms of the way it was made, the way it was acted, the plot lines are coming up. It's just, I knew this kind of thing was inevitable considering how the books were written. I just wish that it... <laughs> that it wasn't <laughs> but we'll get to that when we reach it i don't want to talk about it yet <laughs> so we'll start from the beginning of the episode clary is having visions but at the start of the episode we thought it was nightmares and you know how we thought it was nightmares because i was being very unsympathetic and i was sitting thinking oh widow clary's having widow nightmares <laughs> because let's be real here the reason that they made her have nightmares was so that Jace could come into her room shirtless and be like, Clary, wake up. It's not real. You're dreaming. Look at my abs. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. She woke up and she's like, He's not wearing a shirt. <laughs> and then she turns around and says the most dumbass thing I've ever heard someone say who's having nightmares with their door open, she says, what are you doing here? Clary, you were having a nightmare with your door hanging open. Did you think no one was going to hear you? Or would you rather have been like Alec or someone come in and then you'd be like, oh, well, that makes more sense than Jace. Like, <laughs> what did she think? Someone was going to come along and find her if she sleeps with her door open and she suffers from nightmares. <laughs> I don't know. It was just like when she asked that, I was just like, Like, you were having a nightmare with your door open and you were screaming. You see what I mean here, Clary? B.S. Clary's having visions about her in Lake Lynn. And I know what all that's about. Well, I think I know what all that's about. From the book reader from a book reader's perspective, I think I know what this is what these visions are about. Because Lake Lynn, as I said last week, does play a part in the story. It's just the question of how, why, what, and I don't want to reveal any of that for people who haven't read the books. So basically the dreams that Clary is having about Lake Lynn is basically in reference to what I said last week about Lake Lynn having more importance than just being a poisonous lake. But again, I still can't say much about it because we still don't they still haven't really said much about why Lake Glen is important, why Clary's having these visions about Lake Glen and those swords. So I'm still sort of at an impasse. I'm just like, Clary's having visions about Lake Glen. And that's all I can really say on the matter. Because <laughs> anything else would just kind of give away what I know from reading the books. So, yeah. She's having visions about Lake Glen. Save it there. So we got to see Sebastian and Valentine interacting with each other a lot in this episode. The reason that I really like this is because in City of Glass, the book where Sebastian comes in, it's more implied that Valentine and Sebastian have been working together. It is not really, it's not really something you see too much. You don't see them really working together or how they interact with each other. More so with the fact because Sebastian is undercover and is trying to hide his true identity from Clary and from everyone else, he is posing as Sebastian Verlach, Eileen's cousin, because, so to keep that facade going, he couldn't really interact with Valentine all that much. But I think it's a lot better getting to see how they interact with each other as father and son, because it's certainly fascinating to see the kind of, the kind of interactions that they have, because Valentine is clearly scared of him, because any time, like, Sebastian loses his temper or goes too far or his eyes turn black. Valentine is immediately like back in the fuck up. And it's like, okay, I'm sorry. Please don't kill me <laughs> kind of thing. But except that a more kind of Valentine's trying to keep like he's still sort of he's still kind of calm, but he's kind of like, okay, I'm sorry. Calm down, Sebastian, please. So it's definitely interesting to see those interactions because normally Valentine is the one who's in control of the situation and where he is being very manipulative to Sebastian, he, there is still an element of fear there and it's obvious through how any time 
uh, Sebastian goes in this demon form, or even half his demon form with his eyes, and Valentine kind of re tones down how he's talking to him. It shows that Valentine is kind of, he's trying to manipulate Sebastian, but he's also scared of what Sebastian might do to him if he says the wrong thing through that manipulation. Because so far, the only thing that Sebastian is really standing for is Valentine telling him that Clary loves him. They're going to be a family in the future. His mother was a, was a bitch. She didn't want him because of his demon blood. But Valentine does love him, demon blood or not, because he's his greatest creation. That's all Sebastian will listen to. But the second that Valentine will say something like, your sister is scared of you or your sister doesn't care about you. And Sebastian starts to like lose control. Immediately Valentine's like, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. So Valentine is manipulating Sebastian, but he's doing it as much as Sebastian will allow, it's kind of like under like Sebastian's rules, like his Sebastian's terms and conditions for allowing himself to be manipulated. Anything that Sebastian doesn't want to hear, he won't hear <laughs> because he will get angry and Valentine will have to apologize and say he didn't really mean it. So it's it's very fascinating watching those interactions go on because they are working together to find the mortal mirror, but they're also kind of having this strange dynamic where one second they're working together and then the next minute they're arguing or they're tearing lumps out of each other or Valentine's scared of what Sebastian might do to him if he doesn't hear the right thing. So yeah, it's definitely interesting. Like from, as I say in the book, you don't get to see them really working together because Sebastian is undercover. So it's another one of those things where you get to see a different perspective on things, but there can't be that argument for the books because it's not like the books were so told solely in Clary's point of view. So it couldn't be said that Shadowhunters is breaking through something that we that the books couldn't do because the books could have done it, but the books didn't. So the show was being innovative on its own by deciding to show this dynamic and deciding to show how they get they interact with each other and how they're getting to the point that they are in, in the City of Glass book, with obviously bits changed, bits moved around, events happening in different order and things like that. So I can't wait to see more than that, more of that. And I'll definitely be interested to see how far they're going to take this father-son, if it can be called that, that father-son bond, see how far that goes before maybe <laughs> Valentine says the wrong thing and he is no longer Valentine but a dead Valentine. That it was a bad analogy, but you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Cleophis, can we just point out here, Cleophis is a fucking badass. I didn't like Cleophis when she came in to the show at the start. I say the start, it was more near the end of season 2A, I think, but in the grand scheme of season 2, it was more near the start. When the Cleophis came in at the start, obviously I didn't like her because obviously she was working for Valentine, but I've definitely grown to her in this episode, more so just because she was able to break out of that cage on her own. The serum that Valentine put in her did not work, and she kicked the shit out of that guy single-handedly. Amp was able to get a message out to Luke using her Steli. Not her Steli, the Steli she stole. So, yeah, just giving a shout out to Cleophis, you are a fucking badass and I love you. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't get to do a review of the episode The Iron Sisters because there was a family tragedy around that time and I only made one video that week. And I didn't get to say how much I love how much I loved how badass the Iron Sisters were. I love watching them battle, I love watching them fight each other, I love watching them train, I just thought it was so cool. The Iron Sisters were so badass and I'm actually quite happy that Cleophis is more redeeming herself because in in the episode that she was in, I think it was the episode after the Iron Sisters because she left the Iron Sisters to give Valentine the sword. So Basically, all this is her fault in the first place anyway, so she needs to redeem herself somehow. So I won't exactly say that I like her yet, but she's definitely beginning to redeem herself, and she better fucking redeem herself, because she's the reason they have the soul sword in the first place, if I recall properly. So yeah, Cleophus is a badass. Please keep redeeming yourself so I can say that I like you without feeling guilt, because you are, you were, you are the reason that they got the soul sword in the first place. And you murdered that girl, so... Yeah, you've got a bit more to go before I say that I actually like you, so... But you're on the way, you're on the way. 
Isabel, Max, and Simon were training together, and I absolutely loved this dynamic that they had. I, it it put me in mind, and this is going to sound awful, it put me in mind of two parents, when they were in the um, the Jade Wolf, it put me in mind of like two parents taking their child out to eat, because, Seb uh, not Sebastian, because Max was sitting there, and Isabel and Simon were there, and then like, it's just the way they were all walking as a family, and then when Maya like came in, I was like, God, I mean, Maya, I'm still saying Maya, when Maya came in, it honestly looked like, like Simon had a family behind her back or something. Just like, I was like, oh yeah, Maya, this is my wife Isabel and my child Max. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't mention them, but I, it didn't come up. <laughs> so I really liked the dynamic that they had there, and it was really cool to see them training Max. And them training Max will probably be something that I'll discuss more in Fair and Unbiased, because there's a lot of different ways that this scenario could be looked at. Because there's the way Alec was talking about Max training, there's the way Isabel sees Max training, and there's uh, about how Max sees Max training. So we'll definitely, um, we'll definitely like talk about that in fair and unbiased because there's a lot of different point of views on what could be considered right when it comes to a child training, shadow hunter or not. So yeah, I'll probably talk about that more in depth. But I really enjoyed like <laughs> Max like hunting like. Simon in his um wee apartment that is called his wee apartment. I love seeing Max uh, chasing Simon around in that wee apartment. I thought that was so cute, and it's so good that it's so good that we're finally getting to see Isabel and Simon interacting with each other, because that was something that people have been begging for <laughs> because of their sissy. So we're finally getting that dynamic going on, and we're getting to see that build up, even if. Even if Simon is dating, is starting to date May at the end of this episode. They did say Sissy was going to be a slow burn. This is like a sloth burn. But they're working their way up bit by bit. And I think working your way up bit by bit is a lot better than just having it all happen at once. Like Cleus. Because Cleus happened within episode 7, I think it was, of season 1. And that became to the point that the Cleus shippers weren't able to cope when Cleus wasn't around anymore for a while. So the Sissy shippers have the the most will have the most commendable state of calm and patience by the time they get their ship. And you know what? That'll make it more worthwhile, I think. The weight will make it more worthwhile. So it's nice that we're getting to see those wee bits um like sprinkled in. Simon is interacting with Max, it's and he's bonding with Isabel's siblings. I just, I just think it's sad considering that, um, what I think is going to happen next week, but I'm not going to say what in case there's people who haven't read the books. And I like the way things that Simon says. I love his references to old vampire lore. Like, what was it he said? Like, the rise of Nosferatu or something? I might have got that wrong. But I don't know. <laughs> it just shows how much of a nerd he is. And there's also the Star Wars references. I have never watched Star Wars myself. I know. Shoot me, please. I don't have any intention of watching Star Wars. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just not my thing. That's rich coming from someone who watches Doctor Who. But still, I'm pretty sure that they're kind of different. So... <gasps> I, I might get there. I might get there at some point. It's just today is not that day. <laughs> so I um I I love the wee references that Simon sprinkles in and it's not in the kind of way that it's like, oh, look at me, I'm a nerd, I know nerdy things. Like kind of like the Big Bang Theory. They're like the Big Bang Theory throws in like references every five minutes, just so you're reminded that they're nerds and they do nerdy things and they're really smart. That's why I don't like the Big Bang Theory. Again, you can shoot me if you want, but just my opinion. I grew off the Big Bang Theory very, very fast. I like the way they subtly sprinkle in Simon's nerdisms, and I think it makes it a lot more subtle and real, because nerds don't really, like, introduce themselves or talk in conversations, constantly just tossing out, like, references. Like, I would occasionally toss out a Hunger Games reference, every now and then, but I wouldn't, like, toss out, like, oh, you know that the Hunger Games did this, and the Hunger Games did that, and also, in the anime Attack on Titan, and the anime Yuri on Ice, and in Doctor Who, and Wonder Woman, and in the DC lore, like, you don't, like, throw out, like, references, like, every, like, five minutes, just so that everyone knows everything that you're into, so, 
it's kind of ironic since I referenced them now because that technically that joke was a reference to things that I like but it was for satire and a joke so satire <laughs> that's what I'm going with <laughs> Simon and Maya so Todd 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 if you watch this episode I really doubt that you will because my, my videos barely like break a hundred views so Todd if you ever happen upon this I don't think you will but just in case you do don't make Simon date May and Isabel at the same time don't make Simon date Isabel and May at the same time we've had this discussion before Todd I've mentioned this before I thought that you were done with Simon and May and I apparently not and it's Maya Erin what the fuck's wrong with you stop saying Maya I'm okay with Simon dating Maya for a while. I have no problem with that. It was in the books. We can't, we can't avoid it. But Todd did say on Twitter, you promised us, Todd, that Simon would not date Ma Maya and Isabel at the same time. And the fact that you're sort of building up these interactions with Isabel, but then also having Simon starting to date Maya at the same time, I'm growing concerned, Todd. Don't let the fact that Cassandra Clare retweeted you with that salty little paragraph deter you from the fact that Simon dating two girls at the same time is him being a complete not a fuck boy, and he is unredeemable for that because cheating is just there's no point to it. And I honestly don't see it as part of Simon's real character that he would cheat on someone. But then Cassandra Clare made all her characters go go OC at some point in her stories. But that doesn't mean you have to, Todd. So you can I don't mind you Simon and Maya dating just as long as you don't make him start dating Isabel at the exact same time, please, please. Sebastian kissed Clary. Sebastian kissed Clary. Sebastian kissed Clary. Why? Why did you do this show? I was actually really happy with the way he was saying, she's my sister and she loves me. Because I was just like, yes, they're, they're emphasizing the fact that they're siblings. They do not like each other romantically. I was all for it. I thought it was a great way for Sebastian to still be obsessed with Clary without it having to be about romance. And... He kisses her. That makes it even worse. You've emphasised the fact that they're siblings and then you make him kiss her anyway. <sighs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. The only thing that I can ask now is that, the, that that's the only time. Maybe Clary, when Clary finds out that Sebastian is her brother, she'll um, be disgusted and not let him touch her again. But then she didn't let him... She technically didn't let her him touch her in the books, I think. But it still ended up happening anyway in very creepy manners. I was all for it being about Sebastian being obsessed with her because she's his sister and he's never really had a sibling and he's never really interacted with a sibling or really had a family. I was all for him being obsessed with having a family, not his sister being the lo his love interest. Please let this be the last time, the one and only time they kiss. Please. Please. Because it was an emotionally charged moment, I guess. Sebastian's fucked up anyway. Please let that be the only time, Todd. Please, okay? Please. I'm begging you a lot in this uh, episode, Todd, but please. <laughs> please and thank you, sir. <laughs> So that's it for this week for First Thought Shadowhunters, Angels and Dark Mothers alike. I'll see you on Friday for Fair and Unbiased. We will be talking about Malik. We'll be talking about the Mortal Mirror. We'll be talking about Dot. We'll be talking about Max. We'll be talking about a lot of stuff. We'll be talking about Max. We're going to be talking about Max. So see you next week. And remember, oh my god, keep an eye on your little brothers. Keep an eye on your little brothers. Please, just do it, okay?